Okay, hi everybody. Hi Stephanie. Um, so I just wanted to hop on a couple minutes before we begin. I see we have some friends here on Zoom. We also have uh, some friends watching on YouTube. So I just wanted to see if everybody can tell us where they're watching from in the chat. We love to know where you're watching from. So if you can type it in the chat, tell us where you are watching from. From Zoom, that's fair. Boston, Massachusetts. San Jose, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Zoom, California. <laughs> Sounds good. Santa Clara, Ontario, Canada. Awesome. Well, welcome, everyone. Santa Clara. Great. So we're going to go ahead and start in Montreal. Awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. My name is Lorena Malabrain here at the Santa Clara City Library. Today we have a very, very special guest. I know we've hosted in the past and everybody just love, love, love this event. So today we have the amazing Stephanie Dole, aka the Beetle Lady. She's going to teach us some stuff about some of uh, the most popular Halloween bugs there are. So um, we're trying to get ready for the holiday here at the library and we're going to celebrate with Stephanie. So without further ado, Hi, Stephanie. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi. Let's see. Can you guys see me yet? Let's see. Oh, there I am. Okay, let me be sure I'm spotlighted for everyone. Pin. There we are. Hi, everyone. I'm Stephanie, or Beetle Lady, or Dr. Dole, or Dr. Bug, and I am an entomologist right here in uh, Northern California. It sounds like a lot of you are in different places like Ontario and Boston, and, and that's wonderful. I love that we can get together like this. So I'm here in San Mateo, California in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I am an entomologist, and I teach about all sorts of things that today we're going to call creepy crawlies because Halloween is coming, although I'll admit that that's not my favorite thing to call them because I don't find them that creepy. They are kind of crawly, but I definitely don't find them creepy. In fact, I'll tell you a story. I have uh, two kids of my own. I have an eight-year-old and a 12-year-old. And a couple years ago, I was at one of the craft stores with my daughter at Halloween time, and there were spider things everywhere for sale. And she said, Mom, why are there spiders for Halloween when they're not really that scary? Why do they use those for Halloween. So that's what happens when you grow up with the Beetle Lady. So I have a special program for you here today. Let me bring up, oop, I don't want to spoil it. I've got it on a different slide. Okay, here we go. All right, so I have a program for you today where we're going to give some awards to some of the bugs here in my office. We're going to meet some real live bugs, and I wanted to give these bugs some special Halloween awards. I thought, what kind of bugs do I have that I think really stand out for Halloween time? Uh, so this is me. I'm Beetle Lady. Uh, BeetleLady.com is where you can find out more about what I do. And for those of you who are local, I want to tell you really quickly about something that's super exciting that I've been working on for a long time that is finally going to be here. I started working on this before COVID. We're going to have a pop-up bug museum that's going to be available for rent from Beetle Lady. And it's going to debut at Curiosity Museum in San Mateo, November 5th through 7th. So if any of you want to see me in person or see some of my bugs in person, um, I hope to see you there. Okay, so without further ado, today we are going to give away the Beetle Lady Halloween Awards to a few of the bugs in my office who I think have done an outstanding job in helping to celebrate Halloween this year. And before we start on this, we're talking about creepy crawlies and bugs, and I wanted to show you this display. This is a display that I actually made using Halloween decorations. Maybe some of you recognize some of these. There are three plastic skeletons in here that I bought at a store like a craft store or Target at Halloween time a couple years ago because they were so bad that I had to do something with them. And what I mean by bad is maybe most of you know that one of the things that sets all of these animals animals that I love and teach about apart is that they don't have skeletons. They don't look like this on the inside. They don't have bones like you and me. So whereas that is not what a spider skeleton looks like. In fact, this is what a spider skeleton looks like. And we'll come back to the skeleton because I'm going to tell you something extra special about it in a second. That is not what a butterfly skeleton looks like. That's what a butterfly skeleton looks like. And likewise, that's not what a cicada skeleton looks like. 
That's what a cicada skeleton looks like. Now, in the case of both the butterfly and the cicada, you might be thinking, wait a minute, beetle lady, that just looks like a cicada and a butterfly to me. And it's true. And that's because insects have their skeletons on the outside. And so when they're dead, they look almost identical to how they looked when they were alive. And that's why entomologists like me can have big bug collections full of dead pinned bugs, some of which have been around longer than I have, or have been dead longer than I've been alive, and I have them in my collection and I can use them for teaching and they still look like the bugs did when they were alive. Now that tarantula skeleton's a little bit different. Both those bugs are dead down in the bottom, but that tarantula is still alive. In fact, she's one of the tarantulas that won an award today. So she's gonna be joining us in just a second. And let me show you how that skeleton came to be. She had to grow, and the way that she grows is she takes her whole skeleton off of her body. And luckily, the time that she took that particular skeleton off, I was paying attention and I noticed that she was getting ready to take it off. She had made this nice hammock in the top of her cage, flipped herself over, and now we're gonna see the video I got to take, which took place over four hours, but we're gonna watch it all happen in about 20 seconds. So she starts to twitch a little bit, her limbs move a tiny bit, and then you're gonna see all the magic happen pretty quickly, although it took her a few hours in real life. She's gonna push that old skeleton right off the top of her body. She even sheds those fangs that you may have noticed early on. They're black, they kind of look like spiky black claws or fingernails. Let's watch that happen one more time. So she squiggles and wiggles, and I think this is really hard for her to do. She really has to struggle, she's really tired afterwards, but she has a brand new bigger skeleton underneath that she has. So this is our first award winner today. Our first award winner is the most likely bug to be mistaken for a Halloween decoration. I don't know about you, but a lot of my neighbors have put out their Halloween decorations already, and they are putting out big fuzzy spiders with posable legs. Sometimes they'll put them all on the side of their house. In fact, one of my neighbors down the street I noticed is making a giant spider web to put one of those on. So I have a really big spider that really, I think if I put it on my porch this time of year, a lot of people would think it was just fake. This is my Bahia bird eater tarantula. She's my biggest tarantula. She's native to South America. And these are actually for bird eaters. They're a pretty calm tarantula. Most bird eaters have, we would have a lot of trouble holding. I'm gonna take her out of her cage in just a second to show her to you. I'm not worried about her biting me because her main defense is actually her hairs. Um, her, she has really stingy, itchy hairs on her body. Um, so she really doesn't, doesn't bite as a defense. That's more how she eats, just like you and me. It's not something she does to defend herself. So let me stop my screen share. And now you're back with me. Let me tell you a little bit more about her. Bird eater tarantulas got their name because a very famous artist and scientist named Maria Marianne was one of the first Europeans to go see these. And she drew a beautiful picture of one eating a bird. And they will occasionally eat birds. They'll basically eat lizards, uh, mice, little bugs. But most of their most of their diet are, are insects and things like that. Um, the reason I'm putting gloves on, if you've seen me hold my tarantulas before, I don't usually do this. The reason I do is all my other tarantulas have itchy hairs. Her hairs actually burn kind of like stinging nettle. Some of you from California maybe know about stinging nettle. Um, it's a plant that makes your arm really itchy and burny. So if I picked her up and held her in my bare hands for the class to show you, my hands would feel fine right now, but later tonight my arms would itch. This does the trick, it keeps it off my hand. So let's get her down. She is a beauty and she is still growing. That's the amazing thing about my bird eater. She's actually not full grown yet and she's already way bigger than any of my tarantulas. So let me get her out for you. Come here, Anansi. Her name is Anansi. Woo, come here, girl. There she is. So here's Anansi. And she is a Bahia bird eater, a South American species of bird eater tarantula. Um, and they, you know, they just call them bird eaters because, wow, that's a really spectacular name to have. 
Um, at my house, Anansi eats large cockroaches and things like that. Grasshoppers, cockroaches, big, um, big things like that. And yeah, and the librarian pointed out to us, Lorena pointed out, it's like Anansi the spider from the famous books, right? From the African folk tales about this god of spiders, this trickster named Anansi. And so that's what I named her. I named her after Anansi because I thought, well, if, if I've got a god of spiders in my office here with all of my little spiders, it's got to be my very biggest one. And she is still growing. By the time she is full grown, she will be bigger, um, be, be, you know, pretty much bigger than my hand. She'll go all on top of my hand, her body. Um, and she is a really great, great spider. She's also not very old. In fact, when I got her from the tarantula breeder I got her from, she's never actually been to South America. She was born right here in the United States and was uh, from a tarantula breeder who breeds these and sells them. He said to me, you will be astonished how fast this one will grow. And he did not lie. She is only about three years old and she's already that big, which is pretty impressive for a tarantula. All right, so that's our first award to Anansi. Let's see what our other awards that I'm giving out today are. Oh, our next award, I think this is really good because one of my favorite things to do is actually not to make people afraid of bugs. It's quite the opposite, right? What I try to do all the time with my classes is to make people less afraid of bugs. So this is one of my favorite bugs to teach about. This bug actually could kind of win two awards today. It could win scary but harmless because this bug looks all sorts of scary but it's actually totally harmless. The other award it could do would be maybe newest costume because this bug just did what you saw Anansi do in that video. This bug just took off its skeleton just a few days ago. I came into my office and found the old skeleton hanging there and the new shiny bug um, underneath. So that was really exciting. And this bug is the tailless whip scorpion. Not only does it look scary, but it has an needlessly scary name, a whip scorpion. That sounds super scary, but in fact, these are very harmless. Their only defense is camouflage. They basically hang out on trees. They look, um, they're very flat. And the name scorpion is actually wrong. They are not a scorpion. They are kind of a pseudo scorpion. Um, they have no sting, no bite, nothing like that. They basically just hide from um, predators. So let me show you. This is a close-up of it. They have kind of a funny body too. If you notice, this is an arachnid, so it should have six legs, or sorry, eight legs, but this one is standing on six legs, and it has these two really long things, and these are called its whips, and those are actually the front legs, and what they've done is they've evolved to be kind of like antennae. You'll see it move it around in a second. And then those big spiky things are actually its mouth. And it never uses that mouth to hurt me in any way. It uses that mouth um, to grab on to prey. Let me show you the old skeleton. I have it right across the office here. It's when I get the old skeleton from them, I can put pins around it and let it dry and then I can use it to teach with. So this is its old skeleton and let's meet the bug itself. So this guy that I'm going to show you, come here Crumpet, this is Crumpet and whoop, they are kind of fast. Now imagine if my hand was made out of tree bark instead of skin and you find pretty much have a really hard time seeing this animal. So Crumpet is a Barbados whip scorpion. His species is from the island of Barbados, which is a beautiful destination for vacations. And the reason I can say it's a he is actually, do you see how his mouth actually goes wider than the first part of his leg? That's his femur. And his mouth is wider than his femur. That would be like your mouth being wider than your thigh. That's pretty impressive. And only boys have that. <coughs> the girls have a wide mouth, but they just don't go wider than their leg. And then these are the front legs that he is using to feel around in the world. Let me put him on this camera too so you can get another view of him. These are probably one of my favorite, favorite arachnids to keep. In fact, don't, don't tell the spiders I said this, but if I could only keep one kind of arachnid, this might be it because they're so unusual. And those of you who love books and movies that are made from books might recognize this as being the bug that was on Ron Weasley's face 
in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And one of the reasons that um, they put this on the actor's face is it's not a big deal to do that. This is actually a bug that a lot of my entomologist friends will have pictures of themselves like this with one of these on their face for their profile picture because that's totally harmless and easy to do. He's also a predator, I should mention. He likes eating other bugs, so he gets little crickets and cockroaches and things like that. Um, and neither of these animals that we've met so far eat a lot. They only eat about once a week or so. So that's my Barbados Whip Scorpion. Sounds super scary, looks super scary, but if you have learned about him, you know he's not. And that's a really fun thing. Okay. Oh, let me check the chat. I see there's some other chats that maybe I haven't seen yet. <clears throat> yeah, no, no crafts today. I'm sorry. Yeah, I wish I wish I could always do a craft with you guys. Um, let me see. Let's now go back to our next award because we've got a few more to give out um, today. So our next award is going to be most misunderstood. Right, often for Halloween, we sometimes we dress up as cute things, right? Like puppy dogs and things that most everybody loves. But sometimes we dress up as things that are kind of creepy or scary, right? Like zombies and ghosts and things like that. And I find actually, out of all the bugs I show people, um, uh, whether or not, uh, oh, and I see there's a question. Let me answer this question really quick. Um, what's a vinegaroon? I can tell you, you know what? This is the beauty of being live here. Um, I will not put the tarantula on my face. And the reason is those itchy hairs. The worst place for those itchy hairs to get is actually my nose and my eyes because these are sensitive parts of my body. And so it's kind of like if you are out in the wind and you get dust or bits of leaves in your eyes and they get all red and watery and itchy and irritated, that's what would happen. Yeah, and I also don't want the tarantula, the whip scorpion, his body is designed for hanging on and climbing things. The tarantulas don't really hold on as well, and they can actually get hurt really badly from a fall. Um, back to the vinegaroon, too. Uh, the vinegaroon, a vinegaroon is a close relative of a whip scorpion, and they look really similar. And in fact, here, this is the beauty of being on like this live instead of at the library where I only have the bugs I brought. I'll show you a vinegaroon really quick so you can see how they're similar to the whip scorpion, but not quite. Um, they're one of the closer relatives, although they're in their own group. This is a, a vinegaroon. So you kind of see some similarities to the body as the whip scorpion. This is pickle. Um, also has the things that are like whips, um, but but a different kind of different overall body shape. But another one that's actually, as you see from me just picking it up, pretty harmless. He makes vinegar as his defense. And the other question I saw is, what is the name of the whip scorpion? And the one you met today is named Crumpet. I used to have one named Pancake, so I had Crumpet and Pancake. Um, so yeah, let's go now back to our awards. Thank you for um, telling me those questions that I may not have seen in the Q&A, Lorena. Okay, so we're back to most misunderstood, which to me, out of all the bugs, you know, sometimes I think, oh, people aren't going to like this tarantula or they're not going to like this. But the ones that they really get scared of often, especially the moms when they bring their kids to my classes, are the cockroaches. And I think cockroaches are one of the most misunderstood bugs. Um, and that is because there's about five species of cockroaches that get all over human kitchens and houses and things like that. And even I don't like finding a cockroach in my kitchen. No way, I don't like that. But uh, most cockroaches aren't like that. There's about 3,000 kinds of cockroaches in the world. And most of them are out in nature doing a really good job of keeping our world clean, of recycling rotten nutrients and turning them back into the soil and making a really nice habitats for all animals. So I'm going to show you a hissing cockroach. These are one of the most popular insect pets. In fact, these are one of the only cockroaches that you can very easily get without having to know cockroach breeders like I do. Um, and they are a really fun cockroach because they hiss 
also, and they make it, that's a great Halloween noise. Here's a video of one really quick. They're really slow a lot of the time, but they can also scurry because they're still a cockroach. So let's meet one of these. I'm gonna actually introduce you to two because this is one of my animals um, where the boys and the girls look different from each other. Let's get out. And the individuals look different too. So here is a girl. I'm gonna switch this over to my camera so you can see her. And I don't know how well you'll be able to hear her on. We could try. Uh, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but she's hissing a little. It's a little hard on Zoom. Oh, that's a good hiss. So this is a, a girl, and this one in particular is very dark colored, you can see. And actually, let's see if we can zoom in on her a little more. Do any of you, whoop, there. Do any of you see how there's little things crawling on her? Even creepy crawlies have their own creepy crawlies. Those are mites. Mites are kind of arachnids, so they're related to spiders. And they hang out on these cockroaches. And actually, I like having them on there. It's actually been shown that people who keep cockroaches that have mites are less likely to develop an allergy to the cockroaches because the mites keep the cockroaches nice and clean. Let me show you another girl so you can see how they have different colors depending on the individual. Oh, there she is. Oh, this one's here. Let's zoom back out. Uh, so see this one, she's got more of like an amber color. She's really pretty. Um, and their heads are usually hidden um, under their bodies. And then they've got these little suction cups on their feet. They're actually quite good climbers. Some cockroaches are not good climbers, but these guys are quite good climbers. And now let me show you a boy. This is what the boys look like. I've noticed the boys tend to be a little more hissy. Um, and the boys, if you can see, see how, if I turn him to the side, you can see how he has, oh, come on, he has horns on his, it's actually part of his thorax, it's not his head, his head is the little thing that's tucked underneath. Um, so, yeah, he's got these little horns, and the boys use those to kind of push each other around, just like elk and stuff push each other around. Oh, you may notice that some of those mites are now crawling on my hand, I'm not at all worried about that. I can brush them back in with the cockroaches and they have no interest in living on me. They cannot live on a human being, so I'm not at all worried about them. So I think cockroaches are the most misunderstood uh, bug out there because people have such a strong reaction to them. And I don't blame you if you find them in your kitchen, but just know that there's a lot of cockroaches out there that are doing great things. And by and large, most cockroaches are, um, are helping us by keeping the environment clean and recycling nutrients into the soil again. Okay, we've got more awards. Our next award is going to be for best Halloween costume. And I knew automatically, even though I have a lot of bugs that do a good job of camouflaging themselves to look like leaves and things like that, I had to say that a bug that's dressed up like a rubber ducky is the best Halloween costume. Wouldn't you agree? And this Halloween costume award is going to the rubber ducky isopod. Isopods are crustaceans, so they're related to shrimp and crabs and lobsters and things like that. And the ones you guys are probably familiar with are roly polies. Entomologists often call them the gateway bug because every single child usually spends a little bit of their childhood catching things like roly polies. Well, there are different roly polies all over the world, and there are some that are very unique looking. And this one kind of takes the cake. These are native to a cave system in Thailand, and they are actually a pretty newly discovered species. People have just found out about them, but people like me have already started to be able to keep them as pets. So I have a little colony of these and they are super adorable. So let's check them out because you really have to see them to believe them. And they don't take a fancy cage or anything. They just get a little shoebox like thing. Um, and oh, <laughs> somebody says they saw a cut. No, I, I got that cut vacuuming my car. <laughs> I don't, I don't get cut by the bugs. I get cut vacuuming my car just like everybody else. <laughs> okay, let's go. Here we go. So here's their cage. And what's really important in this cage, because these guys live in caves, is their dirt has to be very specific. So I put a lot of things in their dirt that make it as much like a cave as I can make it. Now let's find some of these guys. I checked earlier. They might be hiding from me under a particular thing. Oh, here's a good group. So these are the rubber ducky isopods, and they are ridiculously cute. 
Let's zoom in on this guy a little more. They have these little faces that look almost like little duck bills. Every time I come out to feed these, I get that Ernie song in my head. A rubber ducky, you're the one. And they actually curl up into a ball, just like your roly polies that you'd find near your house. Let's see if this one will uncurl. This one's kind of a baby. I'm really happy because these have had babies. There are some bugs, like a tarantula, where I buy one and I keep it for a long time. And then there are other bugs, like these guys, where I want to have what's called a colony. I want to have a whole group of them that keeps having babies so that I have them for years and years and years, even if the individuals don't live terribly long. There's one that's playing hide and seek. Oh, and again, this is another important lesson. Remember how we saw how that... Uh, the hissing cockroach had a uh had the mites on it these guys live with something called springtails and those are those little white things they're kind of an insect and they hang out in the soil and they help keep their cages clean so often if i try to make the cages not have anything like that it's actually less healthy for all the bugs this helps it be more like their natural environment and so you can see he's got that cute kind of fanned out tail and that really adorable little duck bill. So these are, I think they win for both the best Halloween costume and maybe the cutest Halloween costume because they are absolutely adorable. Somebody asked, do cockroaches bite? Cockroaches can bite. Anything with a mouth can bite. They don't tend to um, bite people unless we attack them, or there have been some cases where if there's a really bad infestation, they might bite somebody. Um, and those are like the kinds that you'd have in a house, right? But as far as like, if you go on a hike, I go on hikes around my house all the time, and I see the wild species of cockroaches that would never ever get in my house, and I can easily look under logs and hold them and stuff like that, so yeah. Okay, let's see a few other things. We've got a couple more awards and then I'm gonna open it up too because I wanna be able to answer your questions. Um, okay, so best Halloween actor. Cause right, we don't just dress up for Halloween. We like to pretend we are what we are, right? If you guys are dressing up as a ghost, you're gonna run around going, ooh, things like that, right? Or if you dress up as a vampire, I want to suck your blood. So that's all those different things that we do for Halloween. So some of my bugs are really good actors. And the winner for best Halloween actor is the death feigning beetle. The death feigning beetles are a desert southwest beetle. They're all over North America and they are really cool because they are, I actually, when people say my kid loves bugs, what kind of bug pet should I get them? I know hissing cockroaches are often people's first bug pet, but these guys are some of the best because they're really easy to take care of and they live a long time. They can live like 10 years. They can't fly, so you can even keep them in a tank with no top on the tank. And they are really good actors because they do this thing called death feigning. Feigning means pretending. So they pretend to be dead. Um, let's, let's see some of these guys. Let me pull them out of their cage here. Here, I'll get a couple so we can see the full, oh, here. Okay, I have two and they're already acting. You're gonna not believe me. You're gonna think Beetle Lady just brought out some dead bugs to show us today. Here they are. Oh, where are you on the camera? There we go. Here they are. You're gonna think they're dead, but do you see? See how they're twitching a little? They're not dead. They're just pretending. I know, I just picked them up. See? You can see them moving a little. But these guys, um, basically, this is uh, these are both blue death feigning beetles. You'll find them in the deserts of California, Nevada, Arizona, places like that. And do you see how they kind of have a little bit of a powdery look to them? That's what we call the blue part. They're not bright blue like a morpho butterfly, but they have this kind of a bluish tinge, and that's because they make a wax to cover their body. And the wax helps keep them from losing too much water because they live in a really hot environment. Um, but this is also one of the things that makes them really great easy pets because you can forget to give them water for a week or more and they do fine because they're adapted to live in really harsh conditions. Oh, see, you see these alive. 
We can tell you're just pretending. And now you're stuck on your back. So let's turn you over. There we go. So yeah, these are really good. Um, it's a really good defense because when you're a bird or a lizard, you often hunt using motion. And you also don't want to run around picking up dead rotten bugs. The other defense these have is they have a super hard exoskeleton. Yeah, and somebody asked, are they harmful to us? Nope. They don't bite. They're not harmful. You can hold them. In fact, another reason I love these so much is if I am going to let a two-year-old hold a bug, oh my gosh, these are great. Because even if that two-year-old clenches their fist around that bug, this bug is super tough. They're like a little tank. Um, in fact, I think if you tried to eat one of these, you'd probably have to go to the dentist because it would probably break your teeth. Their exoskeletons are super hard. In fact, someone did some research about it and found out that their exoskeletons on a very tiny microscopic level are kind of, the pieces are kind of like jigsaw puzzles. They're locked together in this really strong structural way, but absolutely not harmful to us. These guys are also related to a lot of things you might see around here, like the stink beetles that make a stinky smell, but these guys have uh, lost that ability. They don't um, they don't smell. Yeah, and somebody noticed one of them has lost part of one of its legs. That often happens, especially for these long-lived bugs um, that have been around for so long. And it's pretty common to have an insect where it's missing like part of a leg or part of a foot. Um, and they can do that and not, not die from it. In fact, it's often a defense to make it so that if a bird grabs your leg, your leg can just come off and you can keep going and you're okay. Um, so yeah, that's a, it's an interesting thing. Good observations, guys. Okay, and I think this is my last award, and then I want to show you some beautiful bugs, and we'll do some Q and A. My last award goes to cutest first Halloween. I don't know about you guys, but I love seeing little kids doing their first Halloween, whether they're a baby dressed up like a pumpkin in mom or dad's arms, or a little toddler coming through the neighborhood in a wagon dressed up like a cowboy or a robot. First Halloweens are always great, and um, I have a couple bugs here where it's going to be their first Halloween, and this is actually a local bug. This is a California forest scorpion, and the California forest scorpion is one of our native local scorpions. You may not realize, in fact, it's funny, I caught the mama in Woodside, right here near my house, not too far from San Mateo, and I caught it in somebody's yard, and they said to me, I had no idea there were scorpions living in my yard. And a lot of people said, oh my gosh, I had no idea there were scorpions in Woodside at all. And it's okay, because these scorpions never would have hurt her. They live under logs and things like that. Um, they're not out to get you. In fact, and these guys are, you're going to see, they're pretty small and they have a really mild sting. So it's less than a bee sting. Um, so imagine it would be like having a bee in your yard, but a bee that was very shy and liked to hide from you. You don't have to worry about it. So I got this scorpion, and I brought her home, and I had her for a little while, for two months or so, and then one day I went to feed her, and she had had babies. This is an amazing thing that insects and arachnids can do. They can actually um, fertilize their eggs on through their life, so they don't um, they can have babies, even if you think maybe they can't have babies because they haven't um, been around another scorpion. So here's Mama. The California forest scorpion. Um, and here I'll show you. Oh, and there's one of her babies. As you probably saw in the picture, for oh, there's actually how many? Oh, let's count. One, I see at least two of the babies right next to her right now. Um, oh no, three. I see three. Um, so yeah, she's not that big. You can see my thumb near her. She's, you know, less than my thumb size. And the little baby stayed on her back for a few weeks and then they came off and now they are all living together in here. In a little while, I'll probably separate them and put mom and babies alone because things like scorpions and tarantulas are predators and they will eat each other um, if you don't feed them a ton of food. Right now, these guys are so little, they're eating, um... They're, they're eating a little bit of uh, like fruit flies and things like that. I give them little fruit flies and they'll also probably be eating some of those springtails you saw in the dirt too. So that's another reason that it's good to keep them. Um, yeah, one uh, kid wants to know, is the, are they dressing up for Halloween? They don't, when you're a scorpion, you kind of don't have to dress up for Halloween, right? So yeah, I don't, I don't think I can find a costume that's quite small enough for them because they're pretty itty bitty, right? 
they're really itty bitty. I don't know if you can tell how this is the edge of my forcep here. Um, they're really, really itty bitty. Oh, and how old are they? Oh my gosh. I can tell you, let me think. I think they are a month and a half or so. I could check about when I took a photo of them. Um, I'll see if I can tell you exactly, but I think they're about six to eight weeks old. Um, they Scorpions, a lot of these animals live a lot longer than people think they do, and they grow a lot slower than people think they do. You know, we often think of bugs as being like a housefly that only lives a few weeks, but there are things like some of my tarantulas, they take six, seven years to get full grown. Um, and these guys, I, they could, they could take several years to get to the size of their mama. So, yeah. All right. And let me go back here. Okay, so we'll put their little Heidi back on them, and they've got just a little teeny, teeny cage right now, for now. Okay, I wanted to end by sharing some other bugs with you, because I think one of the wonderful things about bugs is how beautiful they all are. So I, I think you can look at them as creepy, and sometimes I can admit that that's one of the things I like, is if I see a bug that's like really weird looking and kind of scary looking, I kind of think that's neat. Um, but you can appreciate them still. So I wanted to show you, these are all photos that Beetle Lady has gotten to take when she's gone out um, around the world looking for bugs. A lot of these photos are taken in places like South America. This one's from Ecuador. Um, just bugs are beautiful. They can be hairy, they can be fuzzy and colorful. And if you look um, up really close, you can see all these amazing things of them in the world. You know, these, this is a gold chrysalis, um, a caterpillar face, a butterfly. This I love. This one's almost like Christmas time. This is um, a daddy long legs. You guys probably have some of those in your houses. Daddy long legs are related to spiders, but they're not actually spiders. They're another kind of arachnid. This is a tropical daddy long legs. And the reason I say this makes me think of Christmas is you see all those red things hanging on it like Christmas ornaments? Those are actually mites that live on them. So those are a little arachnid that live on this daddy long legs and he's their home. Oh, I see somebody asked, how many babies do the scorpions have? This mama had 10 babies and there are seven still alive when you are a bug you usually have a lot more babies than survive so we had i had a couple of the babies not make it early on um, and we'll see how many make it to adulthood yeah um and yeah just beautiful beautiful bugs yeah the mites are kind of big right i sometimes i see beetles that have mites on them that would be like you or i having a chihuahua attached to our body like a small dog and it's like how do they even go around the world like that and the mites will suck on their insect blood or their spider blood and so the mites get really swollen from doing that um just much like a tick might um drink somebody's blood this is one of my tarantula's cute faces this is a trapdoor spider. Oh, I loved keeping her, but I never saw her because she hid all the time inside her trapdoor. Jumping spiders are adorable. This is a wolf spider. Oh, I love their beautiful faces. This is a fishing spider in the jungles of Ecuador. And that's another one of those California forest scorpions. This is one I took a picture of while on a trip out here in the redwoods. So I think scorpions even have cute faces. This guy's silly face. This is a sun spider. Here's, oh, this is a crumpet that you just met. Uh, this is a fuzzy, fuzzy velvet mite. And this one's pretty big. This is a really big, um, big one. Another jumping spider. And, oh yeah, and jumping spiders even have hearts on their back end sometimes, as you can see. So I just, I love bugs. I think they're wonderful. I think they're beautiful. And there's a lot to not be afraid of. And maybe we can treat Halloween as a time to celebrate them, um, which is kind of what I do during Halloween. All right, so we have a few minutes. I'd love to answer questions. I see somebody asked if the wolf spiders are venomous. They are. Um, all of the spiders are venomous. If the question is whether they're using their venom more to catch their prey, which is usually little things like insects, or whether their venom is more of a defense that um, will affect us. So like a black widow has a pretty painful bite, and that's because its bite is meant to um, defend it from 
vertebrates from big animals like us. And so their, their venom is a neurotoxin that really hurts us. But most spiders have venoms that are just meant to paralyze a little fly. And flies' bodies are very different from our own. So usually spider bites are very mild. And actually a lot of the time when people think they have bitten by a spider, it's not a spider bite at all. So yeah. Oh, I know somebody really wants me to put a snail on my face. I don't have any snails. <laughs> I'm not gonna put a snail on my face. You got you got a a, a a whip spite, a whip scorpion on my face. That that's all you get for today. Why do the rubber duckies look like they do? You know, Nora, that is such a good question. And we don't know yet, right? That's a really good question. Because they live in caves. I don't know exactly what the cave they live in looks like. And I love that question. And that's definitely an unanswered question about the bugs. I don't, a lot of times when bugs are yellow, it's telling you that they taste bad or can sting. The rubber duckies definitely don't sting. None of those isopods, roly polies and things like that t uh, sting. They might taste bad. I'm not gonna taste one to find out, but they might taste bad. So that could be it. But if they're living in a cave using Bright colors is really not something you'd expect them to do because it's dark in caves, right? Okay, how many bugs do I have in all? Oh my gosh, so I'll give you, this is a, another fun thing about being on Zoom with you from my office. This is one of my shelves with all the different bugs. And then if you see behind me, there's two shelves back there that have bug cages on them. I have about 30 tarantulas. I should do a head count. Um, I, and about, I have about 50 different kinds of insects and spiders and things like that. And then if you counted individuals, I imagine it would be over a thousand because I have a few things where I have big colonies, big colonies with, you know, a couple, few hundred cockroaches in them, for instance. So if we're talking about individuals, um, yeah. Oh, the oldest bug I have, mm, that's a good question. So I have a tarantula named Barbara. And a lot of my female tarantulas, girl tarantulas, will live a long time. They'll live about 25 or 30 years. And Barbara might be my oldest, but I'm not sure because I've had Barbara for about four years, but I got her as a grown-up and she is the only tarantula I have that was caught in the wild. She's an Arizona blonde, which is a very common species in Arizona. And I was there with other entomologists and we had a permit to collect them and I got her. And she's one of my best teaching animals, but I have no idea how old she is because she was full grown. So she could have been as young as six years old or she could have been as old as 20 years old when I got her. So I don't know how old she is. Otherwise, I have a lot of bugs right now that I got when I started doing Beetle Lady and I started doing Beetle Lady in 2016. So I have a lot of tarantulas that are um, five years old or because I got them when they were a few years old already they were five or six or seven years old and the ones like that that are girls they'll live 20 to 30 years so my two kids always joke about how they'll come home to visit me when they don't live with me anymore and they'll visit the tarantulas too because the tarantulas will still be with us <laughs> yeah okay oh wow do the whip scorpions actually whip nope they just use those like a blind person uses a cane. Have you ever seen a blind person using a cane to kind of feel the world? Imagine that, but it's like almost robotic. It can really, it can feel, smell, um, taste. It can do all sorts of things. So they're running, they're moving those around in the air because it's they're practically blind. And so they don't use them to defend themselves. They just kind of look like um, a whip. What's my favorite beetle? I love weevils. Weevils are, do I have any weevils right here to show you? looking around. I don't. I, weevils are really, really cute. They're really cool beetles with long, um, long noses. How old is my youngest bug? Oh, I imagine I have bugs in here that just hatched in the last few days because I have some colonies where they're constantly having babies. Um, crumpet is a few years old. Gosh, I've had crumpet for three or four years. So I don't know exactly how old crumpet is. They don't live quite as long as the tarantulas, but they'll live a good 10 years or so. Oh, and I like this question because I'm going to turn it around a little bit. Somebody asked, who's the meanest? Well, here's the deal. None of my bugs are mean. What they do is they defend themselves. So if you're a little animal, right, and you have a big animal like me picking you up and grabbing you and touching you, you're scared. So they act 
they do that these things to defend themselves because what do a lot of people do to bugs they smush them and they do things like that and there's also a lot of things in this world that eat bugs which is one of the important things bugs do in nature is they're food for birds and bats and uh, lizards and snakes all sorts of things right um so yeah they're not really mean they just defend themselves but yes there definitely are bugs that i have that i don't hold very much because they're really defensive they really get worried and they're very quick to like i have a few tarantulas that you try to put your hand in the cage and they go Arr! and so those are not ones that i hold um oh my gosh we've got so many good questions uh tarantula names i'm gonna rattle off a few i've got grover i've got cora i've got bernadette who else do we have here ember a lot of really good tarant Fizzgig, Twinkle, and Dust Bunny. Those are a few of them that I have. Oh, and Panther. That's my black panther um, tarantula. A lot of really good tarantula names. And somebody asked, where do I get my bugs? Now, this is really important. I So if I have a local bug like this, I might have gotten it locally and found it myself. Um, if I have bugs like the tarantulas, I'm always sure to get them from somebody who um, is a breeder of tarantulas rather than getting them from somebody who might have taken them from the wild. Because it's actually quite against the law to go and get tarantulas from someplace like South America and ship them here to the United States to sell as pets. And that's not good for the tarantulas and it's not good for nature. Last question. What kind of bug is Dust Bunny? Dust Bunny is a pink toe tarantula and she looks like She's fuzzy and looks like dust, and she has pink toes. I love these questions. These are some of the best questions I've got in a long, long time. I love this. This is awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, come see the Pop-Up Bug Museum if, if you're around here. And it's also available to rent for schools, libraries, things like that. So maybe some, at some point when the Santa Clara Libraries open back up for us to have programs again, We'll have the pop-up museum there, but it's a it's a great exhibit with live bugs, pinned bugs from around the world, fun activities you can do like nature journaling and build a pollinator garden and build a bug. Um, so I hope to see some of you there. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Dole, and thank you everybody for joining us today. So we definitely will uh, look into having that pop-up here at the library when we can have uh, people inside again. But for now, I do want to remind you all that the library is open and we are having some Halloween crafts at the library. So if you can stop by this weekend, we have some great Halloween crafts going on. And again, thank you so much, Dr. Dole, for joining us today. I'm sure we'll have you back very soon. Yeah, thank you everyone. I was looking forward to it and yeah. Have a good day. Happy Halloween, too. Happy Halloween, everybody. Have a great day. Take care.